Um, so, uh, in this presentation, me, my objective is to discuss about these sentences, and in particular, uh, I am going to uh, evaluate uh, in what sense uh, general relativity supports this, um, this uh, uh, variant of super substantivities. This is the general idea of my presentation today. This is the outline of my presentation, and first place I am going to present very briefly uh, superfluous and uh, in particular the uh, projective view. Uh, in second place, I am going to present the Lenkul challenge. Uh, Lenkul, Lenkul offer an argument uh, from general relativity support superfluous uh, but the uh, cool recognizes that it's necessary to find a notion of uh, ontolog ontological event and, uh, and the notion uh, of uh, fundamentality adequate for the, his argument. Um, then, uh, in point three, uh, I am going to present the proposal of uh, Dora Tarosi. Uh, to respond to the cool challenge, uh, which consists which consists in uh, explanatory events. Uh, then I am going to evaluate the explanatory events, uh, and I present two arguments uh, to show that the explanatory event is inadequate in the context of general relativity. And finally, I am explore. Um, and then I am, uh, I am going to explore uh, as first uh, first approximation uh, my proposal that is essential event. For me, it's more adequate for the uh, super substantivalism in the context of general relativity. Okay, um, this is my thesis. Um, I pretend to defend today, uh, in first place, in the context of general relativity, the explanatory defense turns out inadequate or superadequate to support the super substantivalism. And the second one is the essential dependence more adequate than uh, explanatory defense to account to, uh, for super substantivalism since it uh, avoids certain problems that explanatory defense is set. Uh, this is my thesis I pretend to defend today. Okay, let's go. Um, uh, we can characterize, uh, characterize the metaphysical viewpoint about space-time uh, in this form. Substantivalism, space-time, and matter are fundamental substance. Relationalism, the only fundamental substance is matter. And supersubstantivalism, the only fundamental substance is space time. In this form, um, substantivalism is a dualism uh, viewpoint, and on the other hand, relationalism and supersubstantivalism are uh, monism uh, viewpoint. And in particular, one of the supersubstantivalist variants is the projective view, uh, that is, Space time is more fundamental than uh, or prior to matter. So, uh, about these uh, sentences, is my presentation today, and uh, my objective is to evaluate uh, if these sentences make sense in the context of general reality. Okay. The Lenkul challenge, Lenkul uh, present an argument um, from general relativity to, uh, to support projective view. Uh, this argument consists in two parts. Uh, the first part is energy stress argument. Uh, the energy stress argument says the existence of matter depends on the existence of space time. This argument is supported in, in this fact of general relativity. The energy stress tensor is defined with respect to the metric field G, 
and respect to the major field, of course. But the important point here is that the energy stress uh, tensor is defined with respect to the metric field. So in this sense, uh, the existence of matter depends on the existence of the supply step. And the second part of argument, uh, the Michel Poole's argument, is the vacuum argument, uh, which uh, say space time can exist independently of matter. Um, this uh, argument is supported in, in this fact of general relativity. General relativity in a vacuum solution and G is necessarily present in all models of general relativity. So again, in this sense, space-time can exist independently of uh, matter. Okay, the problem is, or oh, the, the challenge is, Lenkul recognized that it's necessary to find an adequate notion of ontological defense and adequate notion of fundamentality that made sense of this argument uh, to support super substantivalism, in particular the projectivity. Uh, in other form, if X ontologically depends on uh, Y, then Y is ontologically prior to X. So we need a concept of ontological defense and the concept of uh, fundamental. This, this is uh, the, the central uh, debate uh, of my presentation. Okay. Dora and Calossi, um, in April 2021, uh, in response to the cool challenge, uh, the, the, uh, in this form, uh, before continuing, this presentation the focuses on ontological defense uh, only, and the problem of fundamentality is a problem that I address in the, in the future. Okay, uh, okay. and Duran Colossi proposal says the best candidate for computing the ontological defense is explanatory existential defense. According to the authors, X depends on why if and only if necessarily some characteristic f of uh, y explains in a metaphysical sense, this is very important for my argument in a metaphysical sense, the existence of x. Uh, applied to, apply to um, space-time and matter would be matter depends on space-time if and only if necessary, necessarily some characteristic um, f of space time explains, uh, in a metaphysical sense, the existence of matter. According to Duran and Kanossi, um, okay, sorry. So, we can ask the, the, the following. Is the existence of matter explained by, by some uh, characteristic f of space time? Uh, according to Duran Kalossi, the geometrical approach uh, of general relativity uh, can be interpreted in this sense. Um, according to the author, it's in virtue of the peculiarity of space time, non flat, non Minkowskian uh, geometry. Uh, for example, the um, trajectory of Mercury is different to the other planets because. Uh, the Mercury uh, passing very close to the Sun uh, and in the same form is in virtue of the peculiarity of space-time known flat that the radar signal deviates of uh, its trajectory when passing near the uh, massive body. Okay? So according uh, to the um, dual analogy, the geometrical approach is an instance of the explanatory existential defense. Um, one thing very important is that the geometric explanation, according to Dugan Pelosi, are metaphysical and non-cosmic. This is, this is very important. 
Okay, this is the uh, proposal, the, the author. And uh, I am going to evaluate this, um, this animal. In my opinion, the explanatory depends um, uh, is inadequate or at least problematic in the context of general relativity uh, to support supersubstantivalism. Okay? Um, okay, I, I have two arguments to, to, to show uh, this. The first one is the, uh, this argument, schematically, in this form. Premise one, the metaphysical explanation must be non positive This is the first premise. Um, the second premise is, however, it's not, for me, entirely clear that metaphysical explanation depends with causation. So the conclusion is, explanatory depends is subject to the problem present by the causation in general relativity. Let's see, let's um, review the premise. Respect to the first premise, let's remember metaphysical explanation must be non causal. Um, there must not be a causal relationship between the explanation and the explanation. This is a principal characteristic of the metaphysical explanation. In general, it's considered that there should be no causal relationship between, between the external and the external. Uh, otherwise, this would be a scientific explanation. So, the, um, the metaphysical explanation uh, pretends to distinguish the um, causal explanation in, in this sense. Respect to the second premise. However, it's not entirely clear that metaphysical explanation depends with causation. Um, two things. In general, in metaphysical explanation, it's accepted that the explanans or explanand um, is causal or at least contains causal relationships. For example, um, one could affirm that the following respect to the uh, uh, metaphysical uh, explanatory depends, sorry. A radar signal deviated from its trajectory when passing near a visible body because the signal moves in a curved space-time produced by the mass energy of the visible body. In this form, this is metaphysical explanation in the context of explanatory depends we have a explanance, a radar, a radar, a radar signal deviate from this trajectory with, uh, when passing near a massive body. And we have an uh, explanation. This signal moves in a cool space time produced by uh, the mass energy of the massive body. So, this is a metaphysical explanation. Uh, and we don't have a causal relationship between explanations and explanation, but we have a concept, a causal concept in the explanation produced by. So in general, the metaphysical explanation contains causal relationships in, in general. Um, okay. But uh, what is the problem with causation in general relativity? Um, two problems. The first one, none of the main causal approach is adequate to account for event eventual causal relationship in general relativity. For example, maybe the most, um, the, the best candidate uh, for the causal relationship in physical theories is the physical processes. The physical processes say that the cause and effect are connected by transfers, uh, transfers of energy or momentum. But in general relativity, it's not clear that 
we have laws of conservation because don't have a um, mathematical object to capture the energy uh, gravitation energy. So the best candidate for uh, capture the causal relation, uh, we have uh, uh, have problems. Uh, the second uh, second things also the notion of cause uh, can find a, a secondary place in our current uh, measure physics by imposing certain external causal models on the theories. This concept would not be part of the fundamental structure of the physical theories. Um, in general, uh, we can impose certain causal models, but in the physics is at least controversial that the um, causation uh, have a place in the physical theories. Okay, this is the first argument, the, the problem with uh, causation. The second argument uh, to show that the explanatory event problematic uh, is this argument, uh, premise one, explanatory events require Metaphysical explaining the existence of matter, not its behavior. This is important. Second premise, but the theoretical approach is an approach that tries to account for the behavior of matter and not for its existence. So the conclusion is the geometrical approach doesn't meet the requirement imposed by another evidence. Uh, let's remember that the explanatory event um, need that the um, space time explain the existence of matter, not its behavior. So um, the theoretical uh, approach uh, seems to be inadequate for capture the essence of the explanatory event. Okay, um, so, uh, so far, uh, the explanatory event is problematic, so, which is the proposal? My proposal is in the first approximation, first, first approximation, is the essential events. Uh, in general, um, according to find, for example, uh, X depends for its existence on Y, means it's part of the essence of X that X exists only if it exists. Applied to space time, space time and matter would be matter depend for it, its existence on uh, space time. It's part uh, means it's part of the essence of matter that matter exists only if space time exists. Um, we can ask the following. So, it's part of the sense or identity of matter uh, to exist only if space time exists? Um, in my opinion, yes, uh, at least partially. In fact, the energy spent argument can be seen also in this. So, um, in the, in, in, on the other hand, this implies that if space-time does not exist, matter cannot exist. Again, my, in my opinion, yes, no problem. Bacon argument support this affirmation. So, in, in a first approximation, essentially depends seems to be more adequate um, to capture the uh, explanatory depends the, the, um, sorry, uh, to capture the um, <coughs> project review than random uh, 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 events. Okay, um, two additional things. Uh, both explanatory events and essential events involve certain uh, Implicit assumption. Two assumptions um, are these. Uh, at least some of the vacuum solution are physical. This is necessary for my argument. 
The second assumption is uh, G represents the structure of the stack. So let's review the two assumption with respect to the first assumption. The one can also propose a criterion inspired by a um, principle of match uh, for classifying physical solution from non-physical solution. Uh, the criterion is space times mass containing matter field regions. But in my opinion, this criterion ignores the discussion about the physical possibility, in which the physical reason reasonable scenarios are given by the dynamical equation of the theory. The Baker solution are solution of the Einstein field equation, so in the the standard approach of the physical possibility, the Bayer solution are physical. No problem with this, in my opinion. On the other hand, the, um, this principle, uh, it seems an adopt criterion to uh, rule out Bayer solution uh, as physically possible. Um, and um, the, the last uh, think it's very interesting that uh, because uh, the match principle is a relationalist principle. So it's very strange that I pretend to defend um, to super subcontinualism with uh, using the uh, uh, relationalism principle. It's very, it's, it's very strange for me. Um, Okay, with respect to the second uh, assumption, that G represents the structure of space time, the author, Duran Calossi, argue that there are certain interpretations in which it's assumed that G represents a gravitational, a gravitational pattern and not the structure of space time. But in general, in my opinion, it's assumed that the, the metric G uh, is complete in. in, in uh, Will the main main for them or not represent the structure of a space time? Um, okay, in any case, this assumption uh, is an assumption that is implicit in both proposals, in explanatory events and essential events. <coughs> okay. So finally the conclusion, I have tried to show that the explanatory events. Uh, present problems in the context of general relativity. Essential debates postulate as a better candidate the experimental debates to account for dependence between space time and matter in general relativity, in particular to support projective review. And finally, both proposals imply implicit assumptions regarding certain, uh, certain characteristics of the general relativity. Uh, two assumptions. Uh, G represent the structure of the space state and by the solution are physical. Arguments uh, have been offered to show that both assumptions are not problematic uh, in the context of general relativity. Uh, thank you, it's all. Defining, for instance, regularly notions of angular momentum and such. 
but we should see improvement uh, also about this. Um, so, so is the argument really, uh, really convincing that? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, hey, you, you, you say, um, I want to add to uh, your point. Uh, you, you say that in general the ability seems to be uh, the conversation have a place, uh, but it's uh, a problematic in other sense. I, I don't understand. What you're having to prove this, well, here's this criteria for what relation should be. Uh, for instance, the cause of the, the process account, for the process account, you have this process which carries the third one. Now, mm -hmm. well, the, the argument is, well, there is no notion of energy, gravitational energy. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the account rules out that that can be good And then you want to say it's metaphysics, metaphysical relations. I think that's the case anyway, but you know, it clearly is good Therefore, the conclusion is, well, the, the cause of process account would be false. But actually, actually, uh, I think that our entire discussion is pointless because the initial assumption that it doesn't carry any constant quantity is not correct. It may, maybe there is a debate about whether there is a notion of gravitational energy, right? But there are other constant quantities uh, that can be defined uh, in that carried away uh, by uh, gravitational waves, for example. Or mm -hmm. there are these constant quantities that you can uh, mm -hmm. attach to space time can be transferred from space time to physical objects. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I just want to say that unfortunately, uh, I think that one of the key assumptions of the whole thing is the idea that there are problems with just the causal uh, account of interaction with space and objects. Unfortunately, maybe you do not do that. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Um, okay. The, 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 in particular, the, the problem with the observation in general relativity um, is related to that um, we don't have a mathematical object that captures this energy, gravitation energy. It's, in general, it's a single tensor and not a tensor. Uh, so it's problematic to pass to the um, um, differential, differential um, equation to integral equation. So this passes the problematic, so the account for um, causation, the process, uh, process, the physical processes says that the uh, cause and effect is related to transfers of energy. So um, to this, you need an uh, uh, integral uh, um, equation for the capture of the energy. Uh, it's a problem, uh, it's a metaphysical problem. In, 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 the, in, the, in the television, it's OK. Uh, all good, but the problem is how you capture the causation in general relativity in, in, in a metaphysical sense. Um, it, this is the principal problem, okay? Because in the metaphysical explanation, you need uh, the approach of causation. Uh, you, you need uh, the concept of ontological impact, fundamentality, and the uh, approach of the causation. Uh, but uh, in, in a metaphysical sense. Uh, but in, 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 in this case, it's, it's very problematic uh, obtaining this uh, approach. In, in, uh, in this, at least in this sense. Okay? This is uh, my response. Thank you. I think something else you can say potentially against the Dern policy view, which might avoid some of the issues we're having to talk about causation here. Yeah. And that is that it looks like it could be explanatory dependence going from the matter field into the metric field. So here's something you might say. Um, the mass energy distribution of curve space time. And the explanation for curvature out of the point where the region is just in the mass energy distribution, obviously that becoming a paper field equation. If that's right, if that kind of explanatory dependence is there, then it just blows up. The, the sort of idea that the whatever dependence relation is that might get you to have some type of view with this kind of explanatory dependence that you have going in the way. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, 
Okay, but I, 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 I don't think about, about this. Um, um, yes. Uh, okay, the, the problem is that you, you, you uh, must fix the space time or matter. It, it's, it's true that the matter uh, imply um, certain um, a structure of space time, but the, the problem is which is more fundamental. It, it, this is, this is uh, my object. Which is, which, which is first, the space time or matter in, in the context of general relativity? In, in, in this scenario, for me, the space time is more fundamental than matter uh, in, in the same the Lenkul argument. Uh, you 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 can define the energy stress. You define the energy stress tension in, in function of the matter. So the space time can exist if the, the matter uh, cannot exist. Um, this uh, uh, my vision is that the space time is more fundamental. I was disagreeing with that. I, I mean, I don't, actually, I might disagree with that, but not. The point was just that, um, and I think that the matter and metric are uh, much more tightly connected to this matter mm -hmm. than the direct flow CPU will capture because of the slight like explanation between both directions. Which is to say that explanation might be very apart from fundamentality. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, um, Should we pass on? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, <coughs> So I think there's a sense in which perhaps Len Kuhl is conceiving way too much, or at least in your reading. Um, wouldn't it be enough to say, look, the only thing the super catalyst needs and gets from GR is that there's an asymmetric ontological dependence of matter on space-time. Matter depends ontologically on space-time, meaning the existence of matter necessitates the existence of space-time, but the reverse is not true. Space-time does not depend on matter, therefore the existence of space-time does not necessitate matter in the sense that there are possible, physically possible ways in which it could just be space-time and no matter. And this is the view supported by GR, and this is enough to establish an ontological priority uh, that the super-substance panelist needs. How to then maybe explain or give a further, deeper analysis of ontological dependence? Is that a problem that can be happily handed over to metaphysicians? They can take in terms of, you know, is this best captured by, by, by grounding or by this kind of dependence or that sort of concept, etc., etc. But um, if the metaphysicians don't come up with a dependence or some sort of, you know, uh, analysis of that relation that fits that pattern, that their analysis is just to be rejected. They got it wrong. None, none of that will change anything uh, about the asymmetrical ontological dependence that we find in GR. <laughs> and it seems to me that's everything to suit us in that. Okay, I, um, I don't know. <laughs> You do not agree, so where do you disagree? <laughs> I disagree. It, it, uh, because um, for me it's necessary to define uh, the concept of ontological dependence. It's not sufficient. Uh, you say uh, the mother necessitates the uh, space time. Space time. Uh, you, for me, you need um, to find uh, uh, adequate concept of ontological dependence for uh, a film that uh, it's not sufficient, if not. Um, okay, so you agree that there is asymmetrical ontological dependence? Asymmetrical? Yes, of between yes. matter and space time, like yes. in GR. Yes, in GR. It's asymmetrical. But, what you say is that is not yet sufficient for the super substance analyst to win. The super substance analyst to win means something more, in the, an analysis of what it means for ontological dependence. Um, because it's important to define ontological dependence. What do you mean? 
in, in what sense depend on the other? Right, but is it, is it important just because the metaphysician is interested in learning more about what it means for logical depend, or is it important for the super substantialist to win the debate? These are two different. Well, uh, the second one. Points. It's important to super for the super Okay. Yes, it's important. Uh, yes, in, in the second, in the second sense. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks a lot, very interesting. The um, question is a bit different, but it's the same as the book. Uh, I guess I'm a bit uh, skeptical because the two arguments are uh, mm -hmm. um, Because if you take the uh, national equations, okay, so that's also basically a long list of equations of uh, think of them as functional dependence between different quantities. And so you, you might think that. Uh, Okay, you could set the, the stress energy tensor to zero, uh, it's still an interesting structure, and you can play with the equations. But if you think about it, the equations uh, of time relativity are equations representing the, the space of possible space times. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's, it's built by head at the theory of space and time. So you start with taking for granted the existence of space time, the then matter, and you start talking about the relations. It's just a bit like, uh, of course, we will have a kind of uh, basic between space time because you, you could use it there by terms. In a way. Uh, oh, okay. So, so I think that the, the argument you will get from uh, GR to super substantialism just by interpreting the equations may be a bit unconvincing. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, yes, okay. Yeah. And there's a complicated solution, right? If you look at the solutions, may just be purely in a mathematical artifact. I mean, I don't have any reason to take them seriously, but who knows? I mean, uh, in the end, you want to create the curve the actual world, so if we really trust all the solutions of, of uh, the three we are looking at as all representing physical possibilities, I think we need to discuss that. Yeah, just to build on that, I was going to ask you, you do you believe physical possibility? And I think there is something interesting here. Does it represent no logical possibility or is it something more? You know, what is your physical theory? And you know, I've heard arguments to the effect that the Einstein field equations um, don't really give you any physical content whatsoever until you add further energy conditions and boundary conditions, and then you have your physical mm -hmm. theory, and that's what gives you mm -hmm. physical possibility. So I was curious what you would think of pushing back against the Einstein field equation on its own to be physical possibility. <coughs> uh, <coughs> um, okay. In, um, The standard approach of the physical possibility says that the physically irrationality scenarios are given by the solution. But in general, the physicists add the additional constraint. For example, uh, causality constraints, um, um, uh, physical constraint, etc. Uh, but in general, the, the solution are considered uh, physically irrational in a metaphysical sense because which, which is the criterion uh, by impose additional constraints. This is very strange because the constraint, the constraint the solution of the Einstein field equation. And the standard approach say that the solutions are physical in this sense. But I, I agree with, with, with you in, in that the certain solutions are not, are not physical. Uh, absolutely. Uh, this is the problem with the physical possibility. Okay. Uh, thank you for your comment. <laughs> okay. We have one last short question. Yeah. Uh, so I was very interesting. Um, let me just 
briefly follow up on what Sashi was saying. So, uh, I, I think she's correct, like maybe Dr. Boyle has found something in physical content, but like just in the solution to Einstein equation, which I think not enough, like you usually, the Einstein equations are local conditions. You usually specify some sort of global conditions of how like, things fit together in space time. But you don't really need to go through all of that uh, difficulty of kind of defining what things in the region mean because. The argument for my mistake was about vacuum solutions, and no one agrees that, like, Minkowski space time, which is a vacuum solution, uh, is a physically reasonable space time. Like, not to even mention these worst moments, we disagree with that. Um, so, that was just a quick comment. Like, I don't think you really need to go through all that hardness to, to, to get to the conclusion that you need. You can just say that Minkowski makes sense. Uh, I, then, I have a very quick question. Um, at some point when discussing um, Kalosian loose argument, you, you keep going back to this example of the geometrical approach to uh, GR. And I'm kind of confused by that because do Kalosian do who want to claim that the geometrical approach is an instance of super superstructuralism? Like that, that seems really not standard. No, no, Dora Kalosian says that the geometrical approach is instant to. Um, Sorry? To the existential. No, no, it's a, it's a uh, incentive for uh, the, the, the sonality event. Um, okay. okay. It, 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 it say that. Okay. But, but then why does the fact that there is like the, the causation might creep into this sort of existential uh, the physical dependence that, um, that exists in the geometrical approach? Why should that say that there's essential dependence uh, what's what's this thing? Uh, the, the, the dependence that uh Carlos and not can turn What why does the fact that causation creeps into that variation in the geometric approach tell us anything about super subtitalism? Like what the, the correct relation when we discuss super subtitalism? Yes, it depends. Say that the space then claim the existence of matter. So Duran Carlos says, okay, the geometrical approach is an instant of explanatory events. This is the situation. Uh, I guess I'll leave it with them, but this is your proposal. Okay. Well, <laughs> 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 thank you.